Okay, so I've been asked to do a video on basically how to light, and I'm not talking about how to add a light source uh, or something like making different kinds of lights, but actually lighting a map. Now, I think most Unreal Tournament maps, where I, I could even say Unreal Engine 1 and 2 maps, uh, don't really take advantage of Unreal Engine 1 and 2's lighting systems, particularly Unreal Engine 1. Um, and I, th I think if you were to go back in time, maybe like five or ten years, and go to somewhere like beyondunreal.com or FilePlanet, or basically just a site with tons and tons of custom maps for Unreal Tournament, most of them that you go through you might notice are lackluster in terms of lighting or don't really bother to light their maps at all and just either uh, keep everything unlit or, or just add large uh, scale lights that, that basically just illuminate the room without actually lighting anything in a, in a sensible manner. So I want to go to uh, somewhere so I can show you maybe a map that that sort of does that. Uh, I think I have some custom maps around here. I think this is one of them. Okay, so this map was made by Felipe Fondes, and basically you can see that the lighting is sort of subpar here, and in fact this light is just a default light with nothing modified. And the lighting is sort of just floating around the the space of the rooms, sort of there just to illuminate the map and not not really to add anything to it. This is one extreme, and, and you might notice maybe if you go through tons of custom maps that a lot of maps are like this. But if I go to another extreme and go to somewhere like um, Horian by uh, Horence's you'll notice in great contrast to the other one that this one not only has a, a strong sense, an artistic sense of lighting, but, but uses the Unreal Engine one's nuances of lighting to its advantage. And it sort of developed its own style of, of lighting. And this is with respect to something like casting shadows in a certain way, but also to getting glares and and coronas and such other things to emanate in a certain way. So then the, the question is, well, how do you become, or how do you get to a point where your map looks something like this in terms of lighting and certainly not in terms of the other one? And part of that is, I think, following certain lighting standards, but there's a point at which lighting becomes artistic and sort of, because there is an art to, to lighting itself in, in Unreal Engine. So it, it's something where, you know, after following these standards or, or these templates and, and practicing good lighting, you sort of start to develop your own art style because lighting isn't something that you can necessarily say is a method of, of approach, something like making a mover. If I were to make a, a tutorial on making a mover, well, that's a method of approach, and there's not really any subtlety to that. But I think that lighting is, is something that, as an artist, it becomes part of your uh, art style and, and how you, you know, light up your maps. I want to keep this video short, so what I'm going to do is pretty much in detail, everything's going to be covered in the tutorial in the link below uh, in terms of lighting templates and, and the, the basics of, of advanced lighting. Uh, but I also want to go through a few maps to give examples of, of what these sorts of uh, lighting styles look like. One map that uh, I think is quite useful that a long time ago I, I played with the this sort of approach to lighting is uh, Death Bliss's lighting example. And this is useful because it shows that effective lighting has different sources or, or different light objects. That each of them have a different purpose. Now this is covered in, in the tutorial in the link below in depth. 
But if you notice in great contrast to maybe a classical vanilla map in Unreal 1 or, or Unreal Tournament, there's an emphasis in the in the light source, but also in, in the way that that certain lights have intensity and spread. And this certainly shows you how a small room can be lit up in such a way to convey a certain mood and to make it more atmospheric instead of just being a room. And this is a room with very basic geometry too. But if you go to somewhere like, uh, say, Tempest, which is a, a classic, you know, original and real tournament map, if you notice the, for example, the uh, lights on the edge of the catwalk are sort of an artistic decision and are only there for stylistic purposes, don't really serve a, a, a purpose to lighting the map itself. Uh, and actually, the, the most of the map in each room is, is lit up by these uh, large lights with lar large scale. If you notice, that's, that's a, a large chunk of what is actually being lit. So there is sort of a, a, a middle approach where you can basically use a minimum amount of light objects uh, but still have a decent map. So I think there's really two different uh, sections or, or two different categories of, of lighting. And in the one hand, you have your maps like tournament game type maps. And this is something like deathmatch, capture the flag, etc., where players aren't really going to care about your lighting so much as they're going to care about killing their enemy or, or winning the game or playing the game. So in a map like this, it's more important to have a, a, a more well-lit uh, with low contrast map wherein the player can, can easily see his or her enemies and sort of go through the map uh, without having to you know strain their eyes to, to find something or something like that. Uh, and in these maps, your lighting isn't going to matter as much. So you can make, you can do things like this where the lighting actually doesn't really make sense. For example, this light really has no light source and is just there as a stylistic decision. But in maps uh, that are something like in, in single player campaigns, players are more scrutinous about how someone lights up their maps and, and, and they're going to be more critical about how a map is lit up and how that affects the rest of the map as a whole. Uh, so if you go to something like that, let's say uh, Operation Apolli, and I think this one is made by Horian, yeah. Uh, it's called Scar Outpost. In this case, a lot of the lighting is, is sort of a stylistic decision, but at the same time, it's a newer approach to lighting that uses multiple light objects for multiple purposes. Although it does have some features of classical lighting, like instead of a, using a, an actual spotlight for lights, for spotlight lights, uh, you have a non-incidence light at the floor, and then uh, the light source lights are, are there to basically give the spread of the light and the intensity. So you might notice if you go through a lot of these these maps that there's a variation sort of uh, runs away from stand from certain lighting templates and, and sort of just lights up a map creatively. And that's sort of the, the point at which you need to get is something like this where you can uh, light up your map in order to convey a certain mood or, or to uh, perform a certain purpose but still uh, retain the basic principles of lighting as in to, to keep your light sources sensible like if you see here the lighting intensity imitates the, the logical spread of a, an actual light where the 
the strongest area of the light. The most intense area is the closest to the light, and it sort of spreads out as in as a, a real light would. Uh, but then it sort of derives from that and, and gets the point. For example, if you go to somewhere like let's say zenith, and so in something like this, uh, again it. it runs away from the standards and, and sort of approaches lighting in a, a more stylistic way. And in this case, it's it's a lot more contrasted. Uh, darkness is, is a lot more prevalent as you go through the rest of the map. Uh, and even in the cases where uh, there are skybox lights, there are, are sort sources of light from the sky there's still the artistic decision to to keep a certain distance from those kinds of light and keep the rest of the map uh, to a certain extent of darkness and for example in, in this case you can see that as would be the case in in some large cave in in the real world there is a certain extent to which sunlight can travel uh, without s spreading to the point where it's it's pretty dark. Uh, but there's also the case where you look like you look at a light like this uh, that has multiple light objects. Each of them serve a different purpose, and if you notice, it makes certain effects like the uh, contrast of colorization. Uh, where there's two, basically, two radii wherein there are different uh, ex in intensities that emphasize the light source and then it spreads out at a certain extent using another light. Uh, and that's sort of the, the uh, standard of, of advanced lighting is having multiple light sources perform different tasks. So if you look at this light, you'll notice that, for example, in this case, the fog emanating from the light is fluctuating. But there's two different sources of fog. There's the outer shell, and then there's the inner shell that has a different color. And that sort of reflects the color of the texture of this fire, the light source. And if you notice, this is sort of, again, a, a more stylistic approach in the sense that nothing's really being lit, but it's, it's there for artist, artistic purposes. And again, this is the sort of thing with multiple light sources. So again, it, it, there's a point to which uh, lighting becomes more of an artistic preference, as long as it follows certain um, principles of lighting behavior that I think are pretty much prevalent everywhere. Uh, for example, that, that every light object has some sort of light source or is there for a certain reason, and, and not just there in the case of something like in Tempest where you know they, they put that light there to, to sort of give it a pattern. Although you can do that and, and there's nothing wrong with that in, in cases of tournament maps but again I think there's sort of those two different uh, approaches to mapping so you can notice in, in this case that a lot of this lighting is, is not so much for the purpose of lighting up the area because the area is quite dark but giving it a, a stylistic uh, feel or rather artistic feel to what's going on here in, in this environment. And, and that's sort of the case throughout maps like these.